Hi, my name is Dr. Jay Desai, and I welcome you all to this fifth video on non-destructive testing. Today, I will be talking about eddy current testing. Now, what are eddy currents? Eddy currents are the induced electric currents that flow in a circular path. How are they generated? They are generated by a phenomenon called electromagnetic induction. Suppose you have a conductor in a form of copper or aluminum coil and if you pass alternating current or varying current through this coil, then because of this uh, flow of varying current, there will be a magnetic field which will be generated inside and around the conductor. Now, if you bring another conductive material within close proximity to the first coil or first conductor, then the currents will be induced in the second material or in the second conductor. And this induced currents are what we call as eddy currents. They derive, they derive their name from eddies. Eddies are nothing but a circular path of liquid when it flows around the obstacle. Um, when, whenever a liquid or a gas it encounters an obstacle, uh, they flow in a circular path and this is what we call it as an eddy. And eddy currents derive their name from these eddies. Now, in eddy current testing, we use a probe. A probe is nothing but an electrically conducting material which is formed into a coil. And this probe, we use it to generate eddy currents and this eddy currents can further be used for inspection. Now, how do we really detect defects using eddy currents? So, in a normal crack-free or flaw-free material, eddy currents will flow in a symmetrical manner. But if there are cracks or flaws or inhomogeneities present in a material, then this eddy currents will not flow in a symmetrical ma manner. It has to travel a longer time than the time which was required by them in the absence of cracks. And this chain is often detected whenever the defect is present. Now, how do we detect such small changes in the path of eddy currents? So we use it or we detect it by with the help of two laws. One is Faraday's law of induction and another is Lenz's law of induction. The Faraday's law of induction Suppose you have a conductor which has a varying current or an alternating current. Now, since this conductor is having a varying current, it will have its changing magnetic field. And this changing magnetic field will induce EMF in either the same conductor or in the second conductor which is close to it. This induced EMF is represented by Faraday's law and it is it states that induced EMF VL equals to minus d phi by dt. That means the electromotive force around a closed path is equal to the negative of time rate of change of magnetic flux, which is enclosed by the path. So this Faraday's law tells us about the magnitude of EMF. But what about the direction? What about the direction of induced current? Induced current direction is given by Lenz's law. It states that an induced current flows in the direction that opposes the change that caused it. So, if you try to increase the flux through the loop, suppose this is your magnet, and if you're trying to increase the flux, then the induced field will oppose that increase. And if you are trying to decrease the flux by removing the magnet from the coil, then the induced field will replace that decrease and it will try to increase the flux. So the induced current will always flow in the direction that opposes the change that caused it. And that is what is called as Lenz's law. So this Faraday's law and Lenz's law are very important in eddy current testing because it tells us about the magnitude and direction of the induced EMF. Now, the test probe is a coil and it has both resistive as well as inductive reactants. And the combination of resistive and inductive reactants or the combined opposition 
of resistance and inductive reactance is what we call as impedance and this impedance is used to construct impedance plane which uh, is further used to study the defects or the defectory surfaces. Now, what is monitored? What is really monitored in eddy current test? So, the non-destructive testing engineers, the NDE engineers usually monitor two things. Either they monitor the electrical impedance of the coil, how much it is increasing or how much it is decreasing when uh, they are moving across the surface with defect and without defect or they measure the induced voltage of either the exciting coil or other adjacent coils. So here in the defect free sample, as you can see, the secondary field is uh, much higher and here the induced field, the secondary field is much lower and this change can be detected and we can figure out where the defects are actually present. So electrical impedance and induced voltage are two things which are monitored in eddy current testing. The third concept is of liptoff. Liptoff is nothing but a distance between probe and sample surface. When the probe is in air, the impedance is XL is a reactance and this R is the resistance. When the distance between probe and sample surface is very high, the reactance is more and the resistance is less. And as the distance uh, decreases or the lip top curve decreases, then the eddy currents flow and energy is taken away from the coil and this leads to increase in resistance. And that is why for a defect free surface or for a defect free region, the signal will be like this and it will move back and forth in this pattern only. But if you encounter a defect or if the non destructive testing engineers encounter a defect, then there will be defect signal like this. Here there will be change in impedance which will lead to uh, change in resistance and XL will also increase. So resistance will decrease and XL will increase and that is why we will get a spike when the defect is present and we can figure out uh, where exactly the defects are present. Now, let's talk about the inspection system. The inspection system for eddy current testing is really simple. It has three major components. First is the source of varying magnetic field. That is a coil which is carrying alternating current. Second is a sensor which will detect the change in magnetic field. And third is the electronic circuit which will help us in interpretation of magnetic field change. So these are the three basic uh, components of an eddy current testing inspection system. Now, we need to calibrate the equipment before we start our eddy current testing. Why we need it? Because the, in the indications are indirect. And since indications are indirect, the calibration is very, very essential so that we know that our uh, inspection system is proper and we are getting defects where uh, it is actually present. So what can we do? For calibration, we use a reference standard. This reference standard is made of same material as the material to be inspected. If you want to inspect aluminum alloy specimens, then we can we use aluminum alloy reference. If we want to check steel specimens, then we uh, use steel reference. So that after calibration, we can figure out that our system is working properly and we can use it for defect analysis and the results which we get are accurate to a major extent. Now, the, th the one question which arises is till what thickness can we really detect the defects or till what thickness the eddy currents can penetrate inside the specimen. So that is given by depth of penetration. So there is a definition for standard depth of penetration, which is nothing but the depth where eddy currents reduce by the factor of 36%. And usually we can uh, monitor the defect or we can use the eddy current testing till the thickness of 3 delta S because after 3 delta S, this impedance value becomes independent of thickness. Why? Because the magnetic field will will be entirely trapped by the thickness of the material. And we will not be able to do eddy current testing for samples 
whose thickness is more than 3 dies. Now, the last one is what are the factors that affect eddy current testing? So, two factors are there, two major factors are there which affect the eddy current testing. First is the material properties. Uh, what is the alloy? What, it, what is it made about? What is the heat treatment? What is the surface conditions? And the second is the part dimension or geometry. What is the thickness of the specimen? What is the eccentricity of specimen? What is the distance between uh, other conductors? So the material properties and the part dimension and geometry are the major factors which affect the eddy current testing. In this video, we talked about uh, eddy current definition and origin. Then we talked about probe using eddy current testing, how defects are inspected using eddy current testing. Then we use and we studied Faraday's and Lenz's law, uh, how we can monitor the specimen, impedance and lift off curve, inspection system, calibration of equipment, depth of penetration, and factors affecting results in eddy current testing. So this is all for this video. This is my reference. And in the next video, I will be talking on an, another non-destructive testing method called radiography, or I can talk about uh, any topic which my viewers are really interested in. Uh, so suggestions are welcome on, on next video. Thank you.